podcast. Good night. Good night, Martin. Good night to everyone out there listening via the web. Welcome to your favorite online internet program, www.sxmtalk.com. Of course, I'm your host, Christopher Emmanuel. And again, I want to welcome and thank you for joining us to a very interesting program. Call a friend, call someone, and tell them to log on now to www.sxmtalk.com. And you guys, I, I had to say again my apologies for the time started. Why? I was busy peeping at a little broadcast with um, Oral Gibbs and the gentleman he had on. Someone called me and said they were calling my name and talking about my person, which um, have me feeling kind of uh, great right now because whenever someone is talking about you, it goes to show or prove that you're important or uh, probably your message is getting across. I also want to congratulate the small group that showed up at the governor's headquarters today protesting their petition for early elections. You know, it's all over the pages of SXM Talk. Not SXM Talk, St. Martin News Network, BB Shaw website. And they decided to take their case to the Netherlands for further discussion and stuff like that. You always, you always got to congratulate individuals who is taking a stand for something that they believe in or uh, something that they think is a good showing or for a very good cause. So, of course, you have to congratulate them for that. But again, you know, I, I am right back to square one again in terms of informing and, and letting the people them know of what is going on here in St. Martin and the different things that are happening. And we see things happening and we see things moving fast, right? But I'm going to continue sticking to my point. Just like yesterday's program, I'm back with this program again because I had a lot of people call me and send me messages and talking about the same issue with Parliament and Parliament and Parliament and Parliament. And I really want guys to listen carefully. In no time did I ever say that there is no majority in Parliament or did I say that the majority in Parliament doesn't mean anything yes i believe in terms of numbers and in terms of numbers of vote getting i know how the system work in terms of the majority of seats so you have eight seats which is a majority in parliament that i understand when i say that the majority of eight is illegitimate I was making reference to the amount of votes accumulated by the majority of eight. That is what I'm talking about. Because we all had the discussion of who got this amount of seat, who got this amount of vote, this doesn't represent this amount of seat, this one doesn't have enough of this. And that is the point I was making. When you look at the majority of eight, the eight individuals now who say that they have a majority, okay? And I have to go back and make reference to the newspaper that gave the showing of the seats that were allocated in terms of the party and also the amount of votes that every individual got. Because we had this discussion today, all right? That they, they're the representative of the people and they... they the people place confidence in them in terms of the, of the number of votes. And I had to correct the individual. And I said, no. No. None of them. None of them. Not one of them in the majority of eight got a seat on their own. It is how the system is and the allocation of seats that they manage to have a seat. That's what I'm saying. All right? So when you have the majority of eight, eight individuals, they didn't even get 2,000 votes. They didn't get 2,000 votes. They got 1,416 votes. Okay? That's the amount of votes that they got in total. The majority of eight. Two ministers who are being sent home now. Two ministers. The Deputy Prime Minister and the Minister of Education, Silvera Jacobs, together got more votes than the majority of eight. And not seats, guys, but votes. I want you to understand it. Votes. 
So you had more people voting for those two individuals than the majority of eight right now. And that was the point I was making to my good friend, you know, and then we had sort of a heated discussion. He walk off and, you know, decide, oh, you're, you're ignorant and then this one is a loser and because you're lost. And I'm saying to myself, this is the type of discussion that you get into when one cannot argue or defend their point. So this is the discussion that you get into. I also want to say that the Constitution, spell it out, very clear. It's clear in the Constitution. So when you hear Jeffrey talking, right, people of St. Martin pay him no attention because he is the one misleading and misrepresenting the body of the Constitution. You cannot say at one end that because there is no confidence placed in you, you have to pack up and go. When it was clear, it is clear, if the Constitution says, Parliament can be dissolved by a national ordinance. It can be dissolved by national ordinance. The screen gone off. Okay. By national ordinance. All right? So I, I am trying to figure out how is it difficult and hard for individuals to simply say it as it is. Come out and say it as it is. All right? Come out and say it as it is in reference to the Constitution. However, St. Martin people, my point here and my objective is for you guys to know it for yourself. Know it for yourself. Don't leave no one shove nothing down your throat. And then you're running a blog and talking about this and talking about that. I saw on a blog where they say that it was illegal for William Marlin to be in parliament because ministers can't be there. That is not true. As a matter of fact, not only can the minister be there, but he can speak as long as he wants. He can speak as long as he wants. Oh, he must be invited. He must. Did. Where are you guys getting these things from? Please, guys, get your hand on a constitution. Read it for yourself. Understand it for yourself. And if you don't know something, ask a question. Don't leave no one, absolutely no one, shove it down your throats and tell you what it is. No, it's not going to work like that. It's not going to work like that. It is, it, 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 it's a hard thing in this day and age for we as a people to make politicians believe that only they know what's best for us. You are living it. You are going through it. So nobody knows what's best for you than yourself. Nobody knows what's best for you than yourself. And I, for one, will keep bringing the information forward. I, for one, will keep telling the people the truth. I will keep telling them as it is, how it is. But don't rely on my facts. Don't rely on my information. 523-7348. Call me. I can give you a constitution. I can give you the documents of the letter that the Prime Minister hid. And we have to keep saying it as it is. She hid the letter. She hid the letter. Okay? And like I mentioned before in a previous program, all the things that we are going through here in St. Martin, all the things that are hurting us in St. Martin, all the things that are destroying St. Martin, all the things that are not good in St. Martin, comes down to one word, and one word only. And that's leadership. And let us put the cards on the table and stack the deck up. Who, in terms of a leader, have led this country for the past 16 years? Let's be honest. Because, because we are talking about what is so wrong, what is so bad, what ain't good. But let's be honest, guys. And then you just hear everybody say, yeah, but all of them are the same. You know why you guys that say all of them are the same? Because you don't want to say that Sarah Westcott Williams is the one that has it the way it is because she has been the leader in this country uninterrupted for 16 years. 
<coughs> okay? So, to clump all of them up together, we, we, we would say that all of them are the same. But let's be, let's be fair. Let's be fair. And let's be right. The Prime Minister sat back as a leader in the days of the Island Council and watched the guys ran a havoc in this country. Louis Laves, Roy Marlin, Frankie Myers, they destroy this country. Yes, not because Louis Laves is National Alliance now. I mean his pleats are white as snow. No. They did damage to this country. Damage that can't be undone. And I challenge any one of you guys to come and tell me anything different as a leader. Look at the country that we are living in. And how things are the way it is. The minimum wage. The six months contract. The dump. The pollution, the garbage, the filling of the ponds, our education. Look at it. Huh? The social aspect in this society. Hmm? The old age pension. The sporting facilities. Come on, guys. Let's be honest. Let's be honest. And I'm not taking away from the national. They also have a part to play. They also had a role to play because they got terms and stinties that they were in there to make a difference. And to have done something. But we went along with the same train because of one word. Ideology. There's none among the parties. There's none. But this country is messed up. Broke up. Cracked up. Because of leadership. We have a lack of leadership in this country because the leaders that we have don't lead. They deal. And that's the problem with us here in St. Martin. And we need to send a strong and resounding message to the leaders in this country that we want new blood. We want new people. We want new faces. It's time to change the old guards. Let the writing be on the wall for all of them. That we have had enough of the same old monorail over and over and over. That's my program for tonight. Take care yourself, St. Martin. God bless you guys. Goodbye. There was a time when people dare not utter a word. There was a time when people were in the dark and searching for accurate information. Just when all hope is lost and frustration hangs in the balance, XSM Talk emerges and broke the silence. Join host Christopher Emanuel for live and serious discussions and hard talk.